So, hello, uh, good afternoon. My name's Peter Watkins, and I am not forwarding the slide. Let me try again. There we go. <laughs> so, my name is Peter Watkins. I'm director for university relations for Europe, Middle East, and Africa for the CFA Institute. Um, I was going to be joined today by um, a colleague from our South Africa so Society, Tatuf uh, Mashingo, but he couldn't come because of the travel restrictions. He will be here tomorrow. Um, so if you go to our stand, the CFA Institute stand, I'm sure you could make contact with him if you want to. He's a very interesting person. Um, we don't have very long, and I don't know how much you know about CFA Institute, so I'll quickly run through, um, and then I'll move on to, to some other points. But CFA Institute um, is the leading global association of investment professionals. Um, we have a mission. We're a not-for-profit to lead the investment profession globally by promoting the high standards of education, ethics, and professional excellence for the ultimate benefit of society. So it's a very big mission, um, and we try to do that in three ways, through uh, the CFA program, our credential, our qualification, um, to get the designation CFA. We also do it through our membership. Um, we have members all over the world um, who are very active in the industry, and also through advocacy, so promoting high standards in the industry and promoting ethical practice. That's a key part of what we do. Um, just in numbers, uh, we have over 170,000 charter holders around the world, um, 150, I think it's nearly 160 CFA societies. Uh, that's where groups of members in a particular um, financial market come together for networking and professional development. We've been around for a long time, since 1947, and that's created a lot of awareness of the organization um, and uh, a long but very steady growth in membership um, and recognition. More than 25,000 firms employ charter holders, and that ranges from the really big companies everybody's heard of, the JP Morgans, the, the, uh, the Merrill Lynch's, through to um, national and regional uh, companies, um, and then right down to small family companies and, and consultancies. So a big range of employers and a big range of job roles as well. <coughs> so certainly equity analysis, but also portfolio management, uh, risk management, um, and a range of other job roles taken by charter holders. More than 600 universities globally are affiliated with CFA Institute. And that means that we recognize their connection with the content of our exams. That's a very important network for us. And more than 60 regulators recognize the CFA program um, to prove competence and knowledge sufficient to work, to manage money and to work in, in their particular market. So that's us, CFA Institute. The CFA program, which is what we're best known for really, um, is often considered to be the gold standard of uh, finance qualifications and um, has been seen that way for a long time. It's, it's very rigorous, it's not easy to pass, I'm afraid. Um, it takes quite some time to get through. So it's a, a long journey and a big commitment, um, but those people who come to the end of that journey are really very, very well qualified for the work that they do. Um, it's practice-based, so very much focused on the real work that you do um, when, you're, when you're working in investment management um, in various roles. Uh, it's not highly theoretical, it's not highly academic, it's about the real things that, that uh, investment professionals need to do. Typically it takes about four years to complete. Um, we have, it's been a bit uh, of a difficult time for everybody, universities and, and um, suppliers of, of global exams, but we have about a third of a million candidates registering for the, for the exams globally in a year, which I think makes us probably the biggest international finance qualification. Job roles, as I mentioned, people with the charter are portfolio managers. They can be equity research analysts, specialists in particular kinds of assets, um, particular regions, um, wealth managers, corporate finance specialists, and so forth. We have an important relationship, a partnership, with the African um, Securities Exchanges Association, um, which is, uh, has been in place for a few years now. And that's based on recognizing our exams as being, being useful for people working in uh, securities exchanges. We offer a lot of scholarships and so forth. And we have some other programs that some of the staff at the exchanges use. Um, and we've done some very useful research together with, with us here as well. Who employs charter holders? Um, so it's quite a range. If you looked at the global uh, 
picture, you would see the big names, the big international investment company names. But when you go down to the country level, you see a little bit more of a national flavor. Um, you can see there in South Africa, First Rand Group, Old Mutual, um, not surprising, Barclays, uh, and so forth, and Nigeria, Central Bank of Nigeria. So quite often central banks are employers of charter holders and also regulators and, um, the, the, and uh, accounting firms. So the four big accounting firms are big employers of CFA charter holders. Now, my main reason for, for talking today um, is talking about the future talent of um, investment professionals. And we see some very positive signs in what's happening um, in and around the CFA Institute family, if you like. So um, we have three and a half thousand, I think a bit more than that, members um, already across the continent. Um, but if you look at the registered candidates, you can see that that's a big funnel of growth. That's a lot of people coming into the program and heading towards membership. So we think um, if you looked at this snapshot in about 10 years time, it would be quite an interesting picture. I think you're gonna see a lot of members um, and a lot of people in quite high positions um, with the CFA Charter um, working in markets right across the continent. Um, the, the profile of candidates is uh, quite positive as well, actually. So 65% male, 35% female. That doesn't sound positive um, immediately, but just to point out that that's actually, this has really been historically a bit of a, a, a man's domain. Uh, if you went back 50 years, it's just rows and rows and rows of, um, of men uh, taking the exam. These days, that, that has shifted significantly. And um, Africa is actually one of the, the leading uh, regions for women being brought into uh, the profession. We're really delighted to see that. Um, it's ahead of a number of the, the more traditional markets, actually, on that, on that uh, factor. And just to show the statistics, it's just really to show um, the growth potential. So South Africa has always been a very large market for us. It's a very long-established and very um, effective society, local, local society. Um, but if you look at Nigeria, um, not so many members at the moment, but very large numbers of candidates. And that's pretty much the pattern across the continent. So we're seeing um, a funnel coming into the industry of people basically who've committed to probably the toughest, most rigorous exam um, and qualification regime that they could choose. So it's showing a commitment to quality. And I think that's really good, quality and ethics. Our society network. So societies are where our members in a particular market come together, they network, uh, they support each other's careers, they develop professional learning that's relevant for their workplace, they quite often get involved in research, they quite often are talking to the local regulators or uh, the big employers about good practice and so forth. So our societies are really fundamental, and we have quite a few, north, south, east and west, um, in the continent of Africa, um, South African society has been a very long-standing uh, society and uh, is very active, but our other societies are growing and also very busy. Um, as I say, networking, professional development, a lot of conferences and um, advocacy. So we spend quite a lot of effort on promoting high standards, seeing opportunities when there's been a, a new legislation coming out in a particular region, um, or in a particular country, trying to get the views of practitioners to, to have an influence on, um, on new laws and new regulations. Um, and the uh, CFA Institute Research Challenge, which I'm going to talk about in a second, but that's a, a global competition run by societies for university students. And I'm focused on the young, the young people today, um, the, the, the next generation of investment professionals. The, University affiliation program that we, we run, um, this is very close to, to my heart, this, this particular part of what I'm talking about, um, is where CFA Institute has recognized the connection between university degree programs and our own content, the, the, the uh, investment professional um, topics um, and um, themes that we have in the CFA program. If we see them also in a degree program, in a, in a good standing university, um, we look at affiliating, and we have more than um, 200 affiliated universities actually in, in this region, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, 
At the moment, just eight in Africa, um, and we want to grow that. We want to make that bigger, so we're putting effort in there. There's a lot of interest in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Egypt, um, and in fact, across the continent. So we hope that, that will continue. What's the use of it? Well, it shows um, students and future employers that that particular degree program is close to practice. It's close, they're learning things that they will actually need in the workplace, and that gives them confidence in the workplace and gives uh, employers confidence in who they're recruiting. So it's a win-win, really. It shows the, the relevance of the, of the degree program helpful to the student and to the employer. Um, and we, we, we want to grow this network because it's, it's very powerful. It also allows us, it gives us a means to give scholarships to uh, deserving students um, at each of these universities. So the university gets to choose some, some people who get a, a very, very big reduction on their CFA fees if they want to do the CFA program. Um, we also do, uh, CFA Institute does uh, a lot of research with 170,000 practitioners um, out there all over the world. Um, we've got access to people who are really at the, at the coalface, really working um, here and now in the profession. So they're a really great resource for uh, getting feedback and views on what's happening in the industry regionally, globally, and uh, ways, for example, that we can improve our own programs and the sorts of conferences that we should, we should use. So we do a lot of research. Um, I wanted to draw your attention to the first of those, the African Capital Markets um, Report, which is about two years old. Um, some of my colleagues at the back might be able to correct me on that. Um, but we did that um, together with, with ASU, with the, um, uh, the Association of Securities Exchanges. Um, to, to give an overview of the history, the potential, and the future uh, potential of capital markets um, in markets all, all over the continent. It's a really good reference guide. All of our research is free, downloadable PDFs. Just within a few clicks on our website, you can download any of these as, as reports for, for free. I also wanted to note the, um, the others. Uh, there's one on geo, geoeconomics, but also ESG, um, which is environmental, social, and governance investing, um, and sustainability. Um, this is a really massive theme um, and topic in investment management generally at the moment, and is going to continue to be. Um, People want to invest in uh, responsible companies. They want to invest responsibly. And the industry and the profession has to get better at recognizing which are sustainable, which are responsible investments. Um, that's true here. Um, it's true in Africa. It's true everywhere. Um, and we are trying as an organization to, to develop more and more um, information and support for investment professionals to, to get better at working on uh, recognizing and working with sustainability as an element for choosing investments, um, especially if they're portfolio managers, how are they able to decide which, which investments to put in the portfolio if it's supposed to be a, uh, a sustainable-based uh, portfolio. So I'm raising that because I think it creates a lot of opportunity for the next generation of investment professionals. If they can develop knowledge in sustainability, they're really doing themselves a favor. And I think that's a good opportunity for our, um, our university students, um, and particularly actually in Africa, where a lot of people are looking to sustainably invest. If you've got the skills to understand that, um, and, and also the finance background, you're putting yourself in a very good position in the, in the job market. Um, there are challenges. Um, this is a slide full of writing. Apologies for that. But um, yes, yeah, certainly the, the global pandemic, I think, has disproportionately affected uh, young people and students um, in developing markets. It's been easier for some universities with a bit more capital to quickly pivot and turn everything into online learning and hybrid learning. It's not so easy if you, if you didn't have, have that. Um, have that capital at your, dis at your disposal. Um, also, I think, you know, with different um, access to vaccines and so forth, it's caused longer closed uh, shutdowns of campuses and so forth. So um, there is a disparity there, and that's a challenge, certainly, um, in the Africa context. But I do think the education providers are getting better at delivering uh, training and learning 
um, through e-learning um, and through online learning. And um, I'll give you an example of this. I think it's an interesting example. So there's a very long-standing um, Masters in Finance program, which um, has been running for a long time in the UK. And it's, uh, they, they've recently also put it uh, as an online version. And who has signed up for the online version? It's exactly the same rigor. It's 35% African students. They used to have about 2% African students. So online learning is creating opportunity. Um, also, um, there's, a, there's some potential around global mobility. Um, if, you, if you educate and train people to a very high credential, um, are they just going to, to, to leave and go and seek other opportunities? Well, that is a, an issue. But we know from our own membership that actually a lot of people stay and, and gain really great roles in country, and many gain experience externally and come back with that experience. So I think, on balance, it's a very positive thing. Um, increasingly, mobile phones, people are learning from their phones and not needing laptops and, and wireless and so forth. So I think the phone development and the leapfrogging of the reliance on broadband and Wi-Fi is also a great help. Our own curriculum is available on phones now. And affordability, well, the CFA program is a significantly cheaper option than going and doing an MBA. Um, at a university in, in the UK, so uh, for example. So um, I think that's a, another factor, and we do use a lot of uh, scholarships too. So we are aware of this and trying to, to do what we can. Okay, and I'll go quickly. I think I'm running out of time. But um, a few initiatives on the ground. We have a lot of careers fairs. You can see some examples there. 500 people came to the Lagos Careers Fair. Um, in South Africa, you've got both in-person and virtual fairs. You can see they look very different, don't they? Um, the backpacks and the, the very clean um, virtual version. And a lot of professional learning offered by our societies. Um, we also have a lot of initiatives for women in investment management, um, and you can see there are some very prominent um, women with the CFA Charter, um, two, two of the women in there in Nigeria, um, inspiring young women to, to join the industry and showing that they can do it and they can make a success. And uh, the research challenge I mentioned it's a global thing. I happened to go to the Kenya Research Challenge. It was a wonderful experience. And I think the pictures say it all, really. There's a young woman having some experience presenting um, a very serious-looking group of judges. And uh, these are the rather sober-looking winners of the competition. Um, and then some not quite so sober looking winners from, from uh, I think it's from Uganda. Um, but it's a wonderful experience. Uh, they get to, to uh, div uh, deliver an equity analysis report to some very experienced judges. It's extremely good experience for them. So that's it really. Um, thank you. Um, it's what we're really seeing from our perspective is huge demographic potential, um, a growth in the number of people opting for this high uh, difficult, rigorous standard uh, qualification and trying to do that when they probably could cut corners, they're going for the best. I think that's a really good sign. Um, more and more women joining the, um, the profession um, in, in this region and globally, actually. Um, we're seeing that professional education is becoming more accessible uh, through online and through, uh, through even through phone, uh, learning through your phones. Um, I think this kind of respect for professionalism and, and ethics, uh, which is seen by people going the CFA route, I think is, is really good news um, for the future. Um, and the sustainability and ESG focus that I mentioned earlier is just going to create a lot of opportunities for young people coming into the industry um, around the world, but definitely here also in Africa. We're in London, but you know what I mean. Um, and so we're, um, yeah, we're really seeing a positive, a positive story with some challenges, um, and that's our perspective really from, from CFA Institute. So thank you very much. I think I've run out of time for questions, haven't I? But uh, I don't, have I not? <laughs> I don't know. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to, to answer them. If not, you may need to move to your panel. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for listening.